it's, it's leading to a path where we might destroy the world because of nuclear war. I think it's good that Niger decided just like they had enough. Uh, I think other countries in Africa should also do this. Okay, what is up Yam Squad? Welcome to another video. I hope you guys are all doing good. In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the Niger conflict. Well, that's gonna be very difficult. The big question is, will they go ahead or not? Uh, obviously, you know, they've said that they would use force. Now, uh, the, there are some frictions inside the bloc and outside as well. Uh, we've seen, for example, Nigeria, who is the main contributor, if there is a military, mili any military action, it's the biggest country in ECOWAS, 215,000 million, sorry, people. Uh, and of course, they're the ones who will be contributing the most soldiers and the most money to this. Now, I'm gonna explain it to you guys I'm gonna simplify everything just because, you know, sometimes they like to overcomplicate certain situations, uh, what's happening right now, and I don't think it's that complicated, but I think it's a very interesting story. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, Niger, I don't know if you guys know the country Niger, but it's a country in Africa, which is having conflict with France. Uh, the conflict is this, uh, Niger has uranium and uranium that's what you need in order to create nuclear weapons nuclear power plants as well but you need a lot of uranium this is an element which is very very valuable and uh, what france has been doing for years now is they have just been going there taking all that uranium and just giving niger peanuts for their uranium i'm proud of niger that they decided they were like okay fuck france we're not going to do this anymore we're not just going to sit there and watch them come into our country and just take from us right this is a reoccurring thing which has always happened to africa for some reason other countries just like to come there and take from us Thousands of people in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, or DRC, are supplying raw materials for a global revolution. What they're mining here is in high demand around the world. Cobalt. Industrial countries urgently need the metal to make batteries, the heart of all electric vehicles. There are some foreign powers on the ground in Niger, that is France, it's got 1,500 soldiers. You've got also the United States, got 1,100 soldiers in Agadez, in Niger. Now, what are they going to do? So these are all big questions on the table. What we do know is that, uh, yes, everyone is waiting, watching. Everyone's credibility is on the line here, whether it is ECOWAS, also, uh, you know, Western diplomacy, and, of course, what is the junta going to do? I think it's good that they decided like, okay, enough is enough. We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to allow people to just come into Africa and just take from us. You're looking at uh, Burkina Faso with, you know, the, the president as well there, which is almost inspired by the Niger conflict. And they're also going into it, into the mix. And they're saying, we're not either going to do it. You got Treyway, which is Africa's youngest president. I think maybe like what the youngest president in history. Um, I like the fact that he's young. Uh, there's a revolution which is happening in Africa right now. It was not long ago that Ibrahim Traore, a relatively low-ranking officer in Burkina Faso's military, was running an artillery regiment in a small northern town. Now, cheering crowds greet the self-declared leader after he and a group of soldiers overthrew President Paul Henri de Miba. It was the West African country's second coup this year. If we're talking about how young he is as a president, if that's going to be a negative thing, I, I honestly don't think that it's a negative thing because I think sometimes you need the youth to come with new ideas and kind of like destroy this old way of thinking that, you know, the people which have been sitting in power, they're constantly, it's almost like they, they become drunk on power and drunk on corruption. So it's good to see somebody new which is coming in and bringing new ideas and there's a revolution happening. Burkina Faso's 35-year-old president, Ibrahim Traore, has set social media ablaze with his comments lamenting how Africa, despite all of its richness and natural resources, is still so poor that its leaders have to travel to the West to beg for aid. He made these comments while attending the second edition of the just-ended Russia-Africa Summit in St. Petersburg, Russia, that took place from July 27th, July 28th, 2023. 
President Ebrahim Traore, who is Africa's youngest president, also stressed the need for African countries to forge new alliances moving forward to guarantee a brighter future for their people. France wants to bomb Niger just because Niger does not want to give them the Iranium, uh, which I think is wrong. Then we got Putin, which is also coming into the mix because Putin is starting to understand that Africa is a huge nation and there's a lot that you can get from Africa. I mean, there is so many natural resources there and why not come into Africa, promise something. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Putin, but an enemy or my enemy is my friend. And the way I view it is like, at least he's offering something. I'm behind Putin in that sense that he wants to help. But I think we should just be cautious when it comes to Putin because you never know. He's also, he's also one of those people which you should just watch. Since Sunday night, Niger's airspace remains empty as not a single aeroplane can be seen here flying over the country. Information currently in our possession indicates that the forces of a foreign power are ready to attack Niger and its people in coordination with ECOWAS as well as armed terrorist groups. So far, the Ivory Coast, Senegal and Nigeria have all said that they would join in to drive out the junta should the military intervention go ahead. This might end up to become World War III because you got America also stepping into the mix. It has to do with the uranium because everyone wants the uranium right now. It's, it's leading to a path where we might destroy the world because of nuclear war. I think it's good that Niger decided just like they had enough uh, I think other countries in Africa should also do this. Even being in Europe, you understand like there's a constant attack when it comes to Africans and I'm just tired of it. The vast majority of cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and that's essentially because there isn't really anywhere else in the world which has the same grades or mineralogy for cobalt as the Congo. It's really, there isn't really any other country in the world which can claim to have the same um, quality of deposits, quality of reserves. So I get it that sometimes people say like, yeah, peace, peace is the way to go. You're talking about the Martin Luther King philosophy, but after a while you have to, you just have to say like, this wasn't built for us. And maybe we need to go to a place like Africa, or we need to rebuild Africa, so it is for us. As well as army reform, another option for Traore is ties with new international partners, such as Russia. Russian flags have been waved in the street and Russia has expressed support for the coup, just as Western powers were condemning it. Uh, but anyways, those are my thoughts when it comes to Niger, the whole Niger conflict and, and what I think about it. I just think it's it's super unfair that we are still getting robbed. Of course, we have to have discussions like this where we come with good ideas. But anyways, guys, a like, comment, and share if you wanna see more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.